Howdy, folks. Tomorrowland Transit Authority Metroliner nonstop now departing Rocket Tower Plaza Station for a round trip Super Skyway tour. All right, Tony. So now you're up, man. So tell us all about your first Walt Disney World trip in 1991. In 1991. Yeah. And actually, it's an interesting segue from Ron's uh, uh, trip there because we have a lot of similarities in the way it all started as well as where it, it sort of ends up. But I, as I mentioned before, I grew up in the early 70s and I was exposed to the same television show, The Wonderful World of Disney. And I, I also remember that they used to sell toys or models that uh, were fashioned on things in the park. And somebody at school had brought in this model kit of the, of the Haunted Mansion. It was one of the scenes in it with the casket and it opened up and I thought that model kit was amazing. I remember running out and getting that. And there was another one based on the Pirates of the Caribbean. I had a nephew who was my age who had gone to Disney World at the time. And one of my main early exposures to Disney World were these Super 8 films that my brother-in-law brought back from their trip to Florida back in 1973. I'm sharing some of them now. These uh, clips were from his Super 8 camera in which he filmed the parade, some of the corny singers, and what some of the attractions looked like back then. And I must have watched this movie over and over and over, just trying to absorb that such a place could even exist. I remember there was a specific clip of my nephew being hugged by Goofy that I thought was just incredible. You mean these, these characters could actually reach out and touch you? These movies really made me want to visit the place very much. I spoke last week also about how I grew up with the new Mickey Mouse Club, the one from the 1970s, not the Justin Timberlake one. And uh, on there, they had their own special where they went to Walt Disney World. And I, and I caught most of it. I remember running home to see it. And it's actually available on Disney Plus. If any of you have that, you can search it out. It's a nice view of what 1977 uh disney world was like dude um, i kind of remember that yeah. i'm gonna have to search that it's that on disney plus it brings back so many memories it does and and uh it, some of you might know if you ever watch the show facts of life she uh blair was one of the musketeers and she's she's in that special on disney plus they kept the, the commercials that were on the air with it i don't know why they did that but uh if you watch it you'll see it with commercials from that from that time i think period. that's cool though because yeah. some of the commercials are fun to see very retro when i grew up here in new york city my idea of a theme park was the coney island that was in brooklyn i mean we've got the the cyclone roller coaster the beach is right there and all kind of amusement park rides so i visited that many times uh, as a kid and that was surplused later with six flags great adventure which is um a, a, a typical Six Flags park, uh, again, based on all sorts of thrill rides, but not necessarily on any kind of attractions. My sister moved to Florida in 1990, and that gave me a reason to actually travel to Florida. And when I traveled to Florida, I went down with my nephew. My nephew was a big fan of the movie Back to the Future. And at Universal Studios, they had just opened the Back to the Future ride, and he really desperately wanted to see this. So as we arrived in Florida, I was I was actually first taken away by the fact that you actually took a, a monorail from the airport to get your luggage or whatever it was. I, I thought that was the coolest thing. I, I thought maybe that the monorail was the same one going all the way to Disneyland when I got on uh, Disney World when I got up there. <laughs> it was my, you know, when you get down there, you feel the heat, you feel the, the excitement. The airport is, is, is kind of different than what I'm used to. Uh, everything's clean compared to where I grew up in, in New York City. So it was my first time down south, first time experiencing Orlando, and we went to go to Universal, and that was my first experience at an, an actual modern day theme park where there were animatronics and they were um, uh, these thrill rides. And, and Back to the Future of the Ride, I don't know if you guys got to go on it, but it was one of the, the, the best rides at Universal. It was just one of those exciting thrill rides where you got to be in the movie. And at the time, too, I was only a few years off of having graduated from film school and Universal was the 
was one of the places that was themed around a, a real movie studio because it was based sort of on the one that's in Hollywood. So that was a big thrill for me. And on my very first day there, at the very end of it, we actually took uh, part in this little video adventure that was based on Star Trek. And I actually posted that on my own webpage. You can look at it, I'll put a link or something to it. That was my very first day in Florida and at, at a theme park we, that, we, that we did that. This is Hollywood coming to life. It's all in front of me and all these rides are so amazing. All these animatronics are amazing. The films are amazing. The, the place is clean. The place is, is just a, a big thrill. On the very next day, we all got together and headed over to Disney MGM Studios for my very first Disney theme park. So I walk in and I met with the Chinese theater in the distance. And, you know, I had Hollywood dreams sort of at the time in my head, my own head. So I was like, wow, this is like a really cool uh, representation of what I was dreaming of. I mean, how could you forget things like the great movie ride and the themed things that had to do with the fact that it was a, a, a quote unquote working studios. They were actually filming things there at that time. But for me, I had gone down as a huge Star Wars fan. My nephew had his Back to the Future Day. We were going now for my enjoyment to see this new Star Wars ride, which I had read about uh, for a couple of years. A friend of mine had gotten to see the one in Disneyland a couple of years earlier and came back and raved about it. So I went there and Star Tours was my very first uh, Disney ride. And Dewey, like you were saying before, I think in a way, the first one that you go to sometimes becomes your favorite because I think that experience of being able to see my favorite movie come to life in front of me was uh, something that captivated me enough to want to say, okay, I've got to go back on that again. I've got to see that again. I, I have to keep experiencing this because this is something that I love. That was um, my first adventure there. I think that then the following day, we went to see the other parks when I actually finally made it to the Magic Kingdom. And we walked through the gates and I saw Main Street and I looked down and I saw the castle for the very first time. I just had a pause, but I, I just literally just stood there for a couple of minutes, just transfixed on looking at it and, and, and completely amazed by the fact that this thing that I'd seen on TV so many times was literally right in front of me. My nieces and nephews were saying, oh, come on, we've, we've got to go on to all these rides. And I was like, no, I'll, I'm okay here. I just need to soak this in. Because at that time, when you make your first trip, you never know that you're going to ever going to come back. You know, you, you, especially if you're coming a long distance like I did, I thought, you know, I, I want to go see these places, but I, I never in a, in a million years would have thought that I'd ever be visiting it as often as I eventually did. So I had to soak that up and it was great to be able to uh, experience all of the classic rides that I'd heard about for years and to see the characters uh, up close. Be, even at, at the age of 25, it was still a thrill to be able to see that. Uh, when I was growing up, the only time I ever got to see the characters that close was there was a, a, um, a traveling arena show called Disney, Disney on Parade or something like that. And they would bring all the characters in and do a little stage show at the Madison Square Garden uh, Arena here and present a movie with it and present all of the characters, present skits. So that was the closest that I got to seeing Mickey and Minnie and all the rest of them in real life until I actually got to Florida. The theme park itself is just that kind of an experience is something that we can't really explain to anyone else because there are people who will go there and are turned off by the fact that it costs too much, it's too crowded, it's too hot, it's too noisy, uh, too expensive. And But those of us who get enraptured by that experience, uh, when it becomes more than just about the ride that you're going to be on next or where you're gonna go, uh, it becomes um, a place that feels like home, especially when you make the next trip. And oddly enough, we're talking about first trips, but I think I've had multiple first trips because there's the other first trip of when you bring something, somebody else new to it, to experience it through their eyes for the first time. Like when I, we, my niece was celebrating her fifth birthday, the entire family went down. That experience of, of seeing it through her eyes was like being there for the very first time ever. And then yeah, consequently, my father, I took him, he was, he was very elderly, but I took him and he relived his childhood fantasy there. I'll never forget the last time I took him, 
he not only, he was in his late 80s, and he not only walked all of Ep Epcot with me and stood by at MGM Studios with me through everything there, at when we got to the Magic Kingdom, he insisted he wanted to ride the carousel because he remembered having done that as a child. And he was like, he sat on, on one of the horses and went around and he had this huge smile on his face. And consequently, my wife's parents, I, I found out eventually that her father was a huge Mickey Mouse fan his entire life. And so she took, when I took her down there uh, for a visit back in 2000, she fell in love with the place and she decided as a thank you gift, she took her parents down there. And then that became an annual tradition. They would just go every single year. Eventually I would start joining them. And it was it, it's the kind of thing where when you go the first time, if it's going to reach you and it's going to touch you, um, you will find yourself going there over and over again. And like I said, every, every visit to me, I haven't been there now, unfortunately. I have not been to the Magic Kingdom itself in almost 10 years because, oh, wow. yeah, unfortunately we lost the folks and, and things have been kind of crazy over the past few years. So I haven't been there in all that time. But last year, uh, my littlest uh, grand nephew wanted to visit the um, Galaxy's Edge, kind of the same reason that I wanted to go all those years ago. And uh, we were fortunate enough to book a weekend right before the um, the pandemic started and got to see this with him. And again, it was like seeing it through new first time eyes to, to see his excitement at, at being there. We only got to go to MGM. We only got to go, st we spent most of those two days at Galaxy's Edge, but he, he had a thrill and I had a, I had a fun time just being there with him as well. And that's my story. Yeah, I mean, I like the way you say uh, you've had a lot of firsts because, you know, you can you only have one first trip. But, um, you know, when you go back, like, for example, my first time, there was only two parks. Ron's first time, there was only one park. So yeah. the next time you went, there was, you know, another park or whatever. So there are lots of different firsts. So that's that's a good point. That's a good way to look at it. So. Um, and I think to that, yeah, I agree with you. And and I was not married. I went the first time. Now I'm married. Then I went with when Epcot opened that first year. We went, um, and then we, I got the opportunity to take my daughters. Which, and then the parks are changing all the time. So everything, all, and now I'm got a granddaughter that I'm already making plans that when we get to take um them to disney so it's i agree I, I think it's awesome how we continue to have new experiences that will be another milestone with our life with disney absolutely and, so and generally they're cherished memories however you know every now and then there's a clunker of a of a trip but mostly if i think back on it it's always been a, a great fun time definitely worth whatever we we did to have to be there well i've always said that the the worst day in disney is better than the, the best day at work so this is absolutely true know, even if you have like you said a, a clunker of a trip or clunker day or whatever even a, a a rainy day where you're wearing your poncho and you know you can't you know, you barely walk around uh, without getting drenched. That's still better than the best day at work. So I used to love the rainy um, days because it meant you were able to have more of the park to yourself. You'd be able to get on things better. Absolutely. People would. Uh, and it's not that way is so much anymore. Nowadays, you pay so much to get there that you you stick it out. But you're right. Back, uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago, the parks would empty out if it got real like a real bad storm. And uh, you could you could walk on a lot of rides, not uh, don't have that as much anymore but it was pretty good to do that back in the day listen to the complete show on your favorite podcast streamer follow us on social media at wdw reflections podcast see you real soon if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like share and subscribe and click here to see some more of our content